when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be And soon the broken hearted people living in the world will see They can be the answer Let it be For though they may be parted There is still a chance that they be free they And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until forever, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comforts me, speaking words of wisdom. Welcome. Bring yourself into a comfortable position, seated or lying down or even standing, in stillness or in any type of movement. Release every expectation of where any part of your body should be and relax into a posture that delights you. Take a look around, gaze at all that surrounds you with a sense of appreciation for this perfect spot, for this opportunity to connect. And with deep appreciation for the blessing of your being here, and shift the attention of your gaze to your peripheral vision and observe with no need to define or decipher. Notice any movements, colors, shapes. Give your attention over to the parts of your sight that may often go unnoticed and allow yourself to see all that is here for you. Take a deep inhale 
And on the exhale, let out a sigh, a sweet release. Close your eyes if that feels good to you. Turn your attention inward. Permeate your senses with unconditional acceptance. Allow every sensation with curiosity and a sense of wonder. Let every thought come and go with no need to push them away. Embrace the sounds. And how does the air your clothes, your coverings, feel against your skin. Luxuriate in the preciousness of your entire being. Welcome every part of you. Welcome the parts of you that still linger in the peripheral vision of your heart, barely beyond notice, yet always there, just on the cusp of your attention, waiting to be seen, accepted, and loved. Welcome every part of you. For every part of you is deserving of attention and loving care as you are right now. No effort is too great. No detail is too small. You are worthy of every one of your heart's deepest, truest, desires. Feel the gentle, eternal, divine, unconditional love that already lives within you, surrounds you, and is one with you. Welcome this knowing of love into every crevice of your being. Welcome every part of you. And slowly and gently when you feel ready, open your eyes and return your gaze to your surroundings, knowing that you are at home in this perfect spot within your heart is always here for you anytime you need in any moment. Thank you for your presence and may you forever bask in the welcoming divine love that honors and cherishes this precious gift that is you. Hello and welcome to today's Sunday service. My name is Christine and I'm delighted to be doing the card reading for today's Sunday service. The card deck I'm using today is the Work Your Light Oracle deck by Rebecca Campbell. And yeah, let's get started. The first card I pulled was the Crumbling. What are you clinging on to? And this card might look a bit scary at first, like there's these doors and they're like very dark and there's like a thunderstorm but on the other side there's this beautiful green lush nature and this is one of my favorite cards in the deck because it symbolizes very much our spiritual growth 
because when we are going through our deepest fears and when we're faced with them, it might feel like it will never end or that it is this really scary thing, right? And <laughs> we're not sure how to get over it, how to come out on the other side. But this card is really beautiful because it promises that as soon as you come out on the other side of your fears and as soon as you heal whatever these fears bring up for you, so it could be perhaps not feeling secure, right? So as soon as you heal that and you give the security to yourself and you realize that God has been there all along and God really supports you and God is your security, then yeah, then you won't really fear it anymore, right? Because you realize that fear is an illusion. And that's a great part about this card also, that fear is an illusion, but the healing is very real. And you can see it on the other side, like of the scary building, there's this heaven. So if you're going through a certain challenge, if there are some fears in your life right now, then it's very important to heal what those fears bring up for you and to go forth and be bold in whatever you want to do with your life. Not to worry about success or failure, for example, whether it is with your life purpose or your twin flame, because it's very important to move forward with faith that on the other end of this fear is the beauty, is heaven. The second card I pulled was the Great Gathering. It's all coming together, intuitive hints, soul tribe. So this is really beautiful because uh, it's all about calling in your soul tribe, the people that you're meant to be around, like build friendships, your soul family even. And that's a really beautiful connection to have because those people, you support each other during your life purpose. And it's a really beautiful thing to have this support with each other. Also, this card is a great, like, hmm, in the artwork, you see these people, like, they feel a bit lost, like they're wandering in the desert. And this is because sometimes when we feel lost, we keep looking outside of ourselves for confirmation or for the answers. But in truth, those answers have always been within ourselves. So yeah, if you're feeling lost right now, if you need guidance, don't forget to tune into your heart. Really go into your heart space. Ask God, what is my next step here? And whatever it is, God will reveal it to you. And if your next step looks very much like the one you took before, that means that the previous step is not completed and that's okay. But as soon as you complete the previous step, the next one comes up. And that's the beautiful thing about the spiritual journey. You're never without guidance, but you need to be open to it, right? <laughs> it won't come out of nowhere and slap you across the face. You need to be open to it and choose to receive it also. And the third card that I pulled for the Sunday service was Inner Temple. Devotion. Tune into the portal of your heart and that's a really, really beautiful card. Like, I'll let you see the artwork a bit more. <laughs> it's so beautiful and it's all about really having a daily practice even about um, whatever spiritual practice feels good to you. It could be meditation, it could be prayer, it could be even a card reading, right? Uh, it's all about being consistent in your devotion and that's how you build a relationship with God. Your relationship with God is... It is different from other relationships and yet it's very much the same, right? Because in a relationship between humans, right, you would build it over time, you would be consistent, you would like speak a bit every day or every week, right? And with God, you don't have like a limit of don't speak to him more than once a day, <laughs> right? But yeah, by being consistent in your relationship with God and by showing up for God, where God calls you to and for yourself also, that's how you build a closer relationship. And that's really beautiful, right? Because the more you show up for God and for yourself, the more you build this stronger relationship. And this relationship is really, um, really juicy and it feels really good. And it's okay if your relationship with God doesn't look like somebody else's relationship with God, right? Because we're all unique beings and God relates to us in the way that we find, like resonate with most, right? So don't worry if like, person next to you likes praying but you don't really like praying as much you prefer to meditate that's okay right and as long as anything you do is with the intention to be closer to God then that's a way to build a relationship with him you can build a relationship with God even in your work life right even if you're 
a waiter at a coffee shop choosing to serve people in the name of God and like allowing God to flow through you as you serve those people then that is one way to build a relationship with God because you're loving God's children right and loving God through his children so that was today's reading I hope you enjoyed it and enjoy the Sunday service Hello everyone, my name is Soraya Andalib, and I am here to introduce today's sermon by Danny and Christina on the topic of claiming your worth. And I am just so happy that this is the sermon today because I feel like it's just timely. And so many conversations I've had with other people in the Church of Union community, um, so many of us are kind of like expanding and going into new areas, having new experiences. It's like growing and, you know, going to new places in our life purpose and, you know, really like healing in areas that, you know, we've been desiring, you know, growth in for a while. And a huge part of that is about claiming our worth, claiming our worthiness of receiving that good thing, that, that next good thing that God is leading us to. And it's almost like, to me, worthiness is like the, like, it allows us to go to the next place. It's almost like, I don't know if it's like a gatekeeper, but it's like, it's like that acknowledging our worthiness, recognizing our worthiness, claiming our worthiness is what allows us to move forward. Because it's basically like saying that I deserve more. I choose more for myself. I choose to give more to myself. And that's the way to healing. That's the way to, you know, the fulfillment of all of your desires. Um, a lot of times when we feel unworthy, it's like we'll, we'll desire the thing because the desires are in our heart because God put those desires in our heart. Um, but at the same time, it's like there's this other part of us that's like pushing it away and saying, I can't have that. Like, I don't really deserve to be happy. I kind of, I have to struggle or I should struggle or life should be hard or it should be painful. Um, just like out of not recognizing that we actually deserve the thing that we want. And so, yeah, like this is kind of like what allows us to have that thing, allows us to experience God in new places and grow in our experience of God and our experience of heaven on earth. And so, yeah, like I, I know that for many of us, it's a journey when it comes to worthiness. Um, you know, it's kind of like something that we're always going into, we're moving into more and more. And as we heal and ascend, um, we're all coming to a deeper revelation of our worthiness and what that is and what it means to be a child of God. And it's just, it's a process, you know, and no matter where you're at on your journey and how you feel about your own worth and, you know, how much you see it or don't see it right now, there's always more to move into in this area because you're worthy of everything. You're a child of God there's no desire in your heart that isn't meant to be fulfilled. And so when it comes to claiming our worthiness and opening up and receiving our good, um, the sky's the limit. And even that's not really a limit. <laughs> that was something that um, Jeff had said in a group coaching uh, class. I'm in one of his group coaching classes. And he, he talked about that, like how, you know, there's really no limit, you know, not even the sky's the limit. And it's true. Same is true about worthiness, that you deserve everything. If you can dream it, it's meant for you. And it's it's yours. And, you know, claiming your worth is like kind of like that permission slip that you give yourself that, yeah, I can have that. I can I can feel peace here. I can have success here. I can have satisfaction and fulfillment with God here. I can go to this new place with God. I can have this new experience. And so it kind of, um, yeah, it just allows the world to open up to us. And there's just so much good um, available to us. And I, I just love that Danny and Christina brought the sermon because they really shared, um, you know, what it's about, like, to claim your worth and, and how you can do that in a very practical way, um, what that looks like and, and kind of what the implications of this in your life. Um, it's just such a huge part of our relationship with God because there's no question in God's mind as to whether or not we're worthy. But as we claim our worthiness, we're able to receive more of the goodness of God. And, you know, that's that's when we're really able to experience more. And 
yeah, it's just about really giving ourselves permission to have that, to have more God in our lives and it feels really good. Life is meant to feel really good and walking with God, being with God, it's a, it's a continuous unfolding of our desires and every step of the way, it's just about claiming our worthiness so that we can go to the next step and go to the next step and have more of God. And so, yeah, it's just a beautiful topic and I'm just so happy um, to be able to watch this here with you guys. And I just hope that you just sit back, relax, enjoy, and really receive um, the truth of your worthiness because you are worthy of all of your good. You're worthy of the whole world and anything that you desire. And God loves you so completely. And so, yeah, just take it all in. And without further ado, here's Danny and Christina. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Church of the Union service. We are very happy and honored to be providing the sermon for you today. And yeah, so today we will be talking about how you can claim your value and your worth more deeply. We are Danny and Christina, by the way. Yeah, hello if you don't know us. Hello. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, we can start with our three opening ohms and then our opening prayer. Feel free to speak the ohms out loud or in your head. And now our opening prayer. I am the only child of God, forever part of him. I am created by him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary, where I keep his holy creation sacred. I will only allow in his voice. I will only accept his word. Today, I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to his teachings through his divine channel. I will honor what he has spoken and accept it as his will. I will be obedient to his word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, Om, Amen. Perfect. So, yeah, um, like we just spoke about today we're going to be talking about claiming. worthiness yeah and claiming your worth um it's a very important subject it's a very important part of claiming your divinity as divine beings and also it's a very important process as you embark on your ascension journey and continue to deepen um with your twin flame and with your life purpose and all of that. Um, so yeah, we, we decided to do this subject because it's, it's something that we are really diving into at this like phase of our union and life purpose journey is we're really choosing to eradicate all unworthiness that exists in our consciousness because we, we claim success. We claim our heaven on earth and heaven on earth is meant for us and worthiness doesn't like unworthiness doesn't exist in heaven in heaven worthiness is normal worthiness of all of your good and all of your abundance and all of your desires it's all automatic and normalized and what's actually not normal is feeling unworthy and having this false belief that you are unworthy of really anything. Um, and this is a big, um, this is a big area of healing for the whole, for the whole world is unworthiness. And it's been such a, like, uh, 
I don't know, like uh, being here um, in Jeff and Shalia's home at this time of the recording and um, working very intimately with the sanctuary that they've created here, it's really um, taught us a lot about claiming your worth and claiming your worthiness mm -hmm. um, because it's intrins intrinsically related to your success. So um, the first thing that I wanted to kind of bring up is that in truth, you don't get to define your worth. God defines your worth. And the only choice that you have really is whether or not you accept that you're worthy or not. You don't get to like say, oh, I'm only worth about this much. Um, it's not true. God defines your worth because God created you. And what the truth is, is that God created you worthy of all of your desires manifest. And I mean all of them. Every single desire in your heart that exists is meant for you. You are worthy of that automatically. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yeah, and Jeff and Julia have a really good quote on this um, from one of their TFAS classes. Mm -hmm. And it's about like already being worthy of what you want to manifest and how um, any blocks that you experience are only blocks. You haven't received, like if you haven't received something, it's not because you're not worthy or like you're not enough. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to read it. Um, it says, Everything comes from God, and God loves us. God's not withholding our love from us until we do it right or have good behavior. His love is not a reward. It's unconditional. No matter what you stoop to, God still loves you unconditionally. And there's nothing you can do to not be worthy of that love. I love that. Yeah, yeah and I think this really points to, like, what we can do to ourselves sometimes like um like kind of withholding from ourselves or like being like if i am good in this area then i will receive what i want but that's actually what blocks it because we don't feel worthy of receiving it now and right. we think we have to do something first or build something first or be something first in order to receive like our good and or to receive our twin flame or you know uh, success on our life purpose. We think we have to change in some way. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that really needs to change is the perception that you have about yourself of being unworthy. Um, the only reason it hasn't fully manifested is because there's still upsets around your worth or your value mm -hmm. or um, other things that are, um, you know, like related to that really. So... Yeah. yeah, so in order to really claim your worth and your value is really just a choice. It's just choosing to embrace your divinity mm -hmm. and seeing yourself as valuable because God created you perfectly and he created you to be loved. Mm -hmm. And so whatever we allow ourselves to receive is what we will receive. And yeah, it's safe to release the unworthiness. And Jeff said in one of his group coaching classes, which, you know, traveled through the grapevine, um, that we will always find more unworthiness. And it's um, yeah, a choice to replace that with gratitude and appreciation. Right. Yeah. And like, you don't need to have a relationship with unworthiness. This mm -hmm. is one of the things that um, I healed recently um, in, in this like journey of choosing to eradicate all unworthiness I was having a relationship with unworthiness and um you know I was in one of my AMC groups for my uh map healing and yeah it was just a very clear choice of ending my relationship with unworthiness and suffering because unworthiness causes suffering and vice versa really so yeah, it's just a really important thing to um, be on top of 
with your with your healing journey mm -hmm. and your inner work um and the reason it's so important is because it's completely related to your twin flame and your life purpose which is kind of like a second topic that i wanted to bring up about worthiness because you have to feel worthy of your twin flame of being loved completely and accepted completely and unconditionally in order to receive your twin flame um in truth this is a relationship that you cultivate with God and God wants to give you everything. God wants to see you thrive and give you everything that you desire to thrive and live your best life and live a life full of passion and fulfillment and love and expansion and peace and joy. God wants all of that for you. And God is not withholding that from you. Mm -hmm. You're withholding it from yourself. And that's where worthiness comes in. It's the same with your life purpose. The foundation of your harmonious twin flame union comes first. It, it comes before your life purpose. It comes really before anything, right? So the order of priority is, you know, your relationship with God and yourself comes first and then your relationship with your twin flame and then everything else and this includes your life purpose the foundation of your harmonious twin flame union is the foundation for your ascension it's the foundation for your heaven on earth so it's really important to cultivate that but one of the key uh factors of coming into alignment with harmonious union with your twin flame and success with your life purpose is feeling worthy and knowing knowing that you're worth it like you're worthy of all of that and more mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. yeah i want to share another quote okay go okay. for it um so this is kind of um expanding on what danny just said about um like deserving that love, deserving your harmonious union. Um, and yeah, so I'll just go ahead and read it. It's also from a TFAS class. It says, all the good that you see that anyone has is because they're loved by God. And you deserve that love too. And the only reason you might not experience that love is because you've held blocks up to it. You've said, nope, you don't deserve that love and God will honor your decision. God will say, okay, you don't want my love. And then Jeff says, you're not lucky to be here. You're lucky because you're loved. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and so I think that's why it's so important to claim, like just allow God to give you what you desire because he will honor your choice. Yeah. And so I feel like we can just take a moment to like open our hearts and reaffirm that we are worthy mm -hmm. and that we are loved mm -hmm. and that you are enough and it's safe to receive love and safe to receive from God. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yep, just because other people, you know, may have something that you want, it does not make you unworthy of that thing that they have, they have a th something that you can't have. It's not that they're lucky and you're not lucky. Mm -hmm. It's just that they've allowed God to love them. They've allowed God in, in that place mm -hmm. in their life. They've given that to themselves through God. They've allowed that abundance and that love to overflow into their life. And everyone has this ability because we are all children of God. So if anything, when you see people have success, whether it's with their harmonious union, with their life purpose, whatever it is, know that it's yours too. 
They're showing you that it's yours too, not that they have something that you don't have. Right, they're showing you what you already have. Right, they're showing you what you already have and what you have access to. And your good is going to look very specific and very unique to you and how you were created. It's perfect for you. You don't want anybody else's good because it's their good. It's not, it's meant for them. It's not meant for you because your good is unique. God created mm -hmm. it just for you. Yeah. You don't have to share it with anyone. I mean, obviously yeah. you share your love, right? But you share your, your gifts, love you share your love. Is, yeah. But <laughs> God has your good saved just for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like another thing that I wanted to bring up um, about worth that I've come to realize is that worth allows you to invest in yourself and to choose to share it. So when you see yourself as worthy and when you see yourself as valuable because you are divine and you are a divine being, you will invest in yourself naturally because if you're valuable and if you're worthy, then it's imperative that you invest in yourself, whether it's with spiritual support, helping you move through uh, your blocks and your challenges and your upsets, or um, always choosing to be on top of your self-care, um, always choosing to invest in your, in your body and in your health, in your well-being, um, choosing to relax and invest in your, I don't know, your joy, like mm -hmm. having fun in life, investing in your relationship with your twin flame, investing in your, um, your life purpose and your business. And the way that it overflows is by investing in yourself. So investing all of this energy into yourself and not investing it in external things to prove your worth, but instead investing in yourself because you're already worthy, this is what creates the overflow that you can share with others. And the next point that I wanted to bring up is that it actually, it increases your abundance. It increases your wealth because the more that you invest in yourself, the more you invest in your value, in your true value. Um, you come into alignment more and more and more with your value and by doing that you're able to give more and more because you're giving yourself more mm -hmm. and when you give you receive and that's how abundance works mm -hmm. is you give your gift and you receive your wealth and your abundance from God because you're giving and you're sharing and you're loving but you can't do that on an empty cup and you can't really do that if you feel unworthy. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's yeah. really important. It's like, it's a really, really important thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's important to see the value that you, that you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's really helped us is, just really reaffirming the truth every time a feeling of unworthiness comes up or not enoughness it's just a matter of saying no to that voice mm -hmm. and reaffirming that you are enough and taking your power back mm -hmm. um because i feel like maybe we can feel powerless to that voice like oh this voice is telling me no i'm not enough but you have to say no like so not true and, you know, give yourself what you need to feel loved. But it's really just as simple as reaffirming the truth and telling yourself the truth. Yeah. And, yeah, just allowing it to be simple and easy. Yep. Yeah, and especially those, like, on this journey of choosing to um, love yourself with the mirror exercise and to build that uh, well, a beautiful, endless well of love. Um, from within you you know how valuable that is right like you know how to love people because you know how to love yourself like you know how to actually truly love and cultivate and invest and expand relationships you know how to have a real relationship 
not only with people, but with the world and with yourself and with everything. You know how valuable that is? You know how much people don't actually know how to do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's huge. That's yeah. huge, you know? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't like you can be an ascension coach. You can be a doctor. You can be a, a real estate investor. It doesn't matter. Like if you have cultivated that love and that wisdom within yourself, you can do anything with that and add immense everlasting value to whatever it is that you do. Amen. Yeah. And it's not outside of you. It's not something where like, oh, I'm building the value inside of myself. It's like, no, you're already valuable. You're aligning yourself with the value that you already are. Mm -hmm. So moral of the story you are worthy yeah and enough yeah. yeah yeah you are worthy and enough and it's safe to fully embrace that you're not selfish for embracing it mm -hmm. yeah does that feel complete to you yeah i mean i could honestly go on forever but it feels pretty complete to me okay yeah so if you're ready, we will close off with our three closing ohms and our closing prayer. Okay. and our closing prayer. Father, I accept your word into my heart. I will honor your will in my life and will follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me with clarity and this teaching of union, that I may be forever in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teaching with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name, Om Amen. Speaking this prayer in your heart means you have accepted that you are on the path of awakening to your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teachings of union with God wherever you find them and purify your consciousness into perfect union with your creator. Well, thank you everyone <laughs> um, for coming to this week's Church of Union service. And we will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hello, everyone, and thank you for watching that beautiful sermon by Danny and Christina. It was just so perfect. Like, I just loved everything about the sermon. There were so many notes that I took, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so true. Um, I know a few things that stood out to me was like in the beginning when they were talking about how God defines our worth and that that's not something that we define um, and that we really just surrender to the word like the worthiness that we already have because God created us worthy and just letting go of that like attachment they talked about like the attachment to like suffering and how like feeling unworthy is associated with suffering and really when we claim our worthiness, we get, we give ourselves permission to let go of suffering. And that to me was huge. I know that that's like 
that's something I've experienced on my own healing journey so much um, is like really like when I'm claiming my worthiness, I'm, I'm choosing to let go of these things that didn't feel good to me before that didn't really honor my divine self. And so, yeah, it's just, uh, just beautiful. The, the things that they shared and, um, just about like God's love for us and all the things that exist for us and that it's just always available. It's just about us receiving it and just choosing to be with God there. So beautiful sermon. Just thank you so much to Danny and Christina for sharing that with us today. And um, in other news with the Church of Union, um, if you would like to check out any of our previous sermons, meditation, music, card readings, all of that can be found on unionism.org. And so you can check that out on the website. You can also, if you would like to donate or tithe to the church, you can do that there as well. And that will help us spread the message of unionism to the world. And if you want to discuss even more about this topic of today's sermon, um, we have an after church tea time. You can find that at the Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group on Facebook. And there you can kind of join in. There's a live discussion with students of the work and of, you know, this, you know, unionists meeting together and really talking about um, the sermon. So if you want to go deeper on this topic, you can share your thoughts. You can join in with the discussion in the comments. So that's a great place to join us there. And uh, that's all we have for you today. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day um, or night, depending on where you are in the world. And we will see you next week.